this video, we are continuing our discussion of section 11.5 um, with another example. So this example says, find the plane containing the points uh, 3, 2, 1 and 3, 1, negative 5. And um, the plane is orthogonal to the plane P1, and they give us that expression. So I drew a picture to kind of help us out here. Um, that, okay, so P1 is my red plane there. And I actually can take um, the, I can take the equation here and I can find a normal vector for that. So the normal vector for that, let's write this down, um, N1, call it that since it's plane one. The normal vector, I pick up my coefficients, I got six, seven, two. That normal vector, how we wanna think about that is let's think about it coming straight out of um, this the, uh, plane, the red plane, right there on the plane two, like on in P2. Well, I can count that vector as something that is inside of P2 because I know P2 is going to be orthogonal. So I have um, a vector that runs in the same direction as the plane I'm trying to find the equation for. Well, I don't have an or I need two things. I need a point in P2. Well, I have two points to choose from but I also need an N2. Remember, an N2 is going to be orthogonal to P2, meaning it's going to run, um, we don't know if it's going to run in the same direction as P1. Oh, it will, actually. Um, but if I have a vector in P2, and I want a vector that's going to be normal, if I can find another vector in P2, then I can cross them and find an orthogonal vector. It's kind of the go-to method when finding an equation of the plane. Well, I can create a vector right here, right? Let's call it V1. So let's go ahead and find V1. V1 is just PQ, all right? So I got Q minus P. I got 0, negative 1, and negative 6, all right? I am going to cross those now because that's going to give me a normal vector for plane 2. Um, let's cross, uh, because of my notes, we'll do V first. V crossed with N. Now, does it matter? No, because either we're going to get, remember, when we change our order of our cross, it's either going to give us a vector that is up or down, but they'll both be orthogonal. So we are taking, if you're, if you're unsure what's going on, we took this normal vector here. We got the normal vector from that. We know that vector lives in P2 because it says that that plane is orthogonal to P2. We also found the ortho, uh, a vector PQ that also lives in P2. So now we have two vectors that live in P2. If I cross those, then we will get the normal vector we were looking for that is going to be in the same direction as P1. All right, so let's multiply these with the cross product. So I have I, J, K, and then we get 0, negative 1, negative 6, 6, 7, 2, right? To keep my video short, I'm going to go ahead and give you what this comes out as. It's 40i minus 36j plus 6k, All right? Notice that everything is divisible by 2, so we're going to divide everything by 2 um, just to make our numbers smaller. And remember, we can do, we can take out numbers or multiply our directional numbers as long as it just has to do with direction and not distance. Well, the normal vector is just direction. Then we don't care about how long it is or anything. So we are going to use the one inside um, along with the this point. So for my equation of the orange plane there, P2, I have 20 x minus 3 minus 18 y minus 2, and then the last one is going to be plus 3, z minus 1. This is standard form. If we work it out, multiply it out, general form ends up being 20x minus 18y plus 3z equals 27. This is general form. Um, I'm not working that out because I trust that you can do, that's algebra. Um, the, the big thing here is how to set up the planes um, and think about it. You don't have to draw that picture, but I think it's much easier to understand um, with that picture.